Podcast with Gary and Kelly, with today's special guest, Lindsay Webster. And now, Gary and Kelly. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Gary and Kelly. Welcome to the Coach House. Woohoo! How's your drinks? How's your muffins? Kelly, Kelly's buying the next round. Woohoo! There you go. <laughs> there you go. We're very glad you're here. This is really a special morning. And I think you're all going to agree that yeah, this is a very special new talent that you're going to be hearing an awful lot about. Yep. Well, she's, you know, it's another one of those overnight success stories after a long time. But we have her first. We do indeed. We also have first, <laughs> literally first, the new CD that will be out in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks, but it's going to look something like this. It's Whoa. called uh, Back to Your Heart. She, uh, she has flown out here from uh, their medical marijuana farm in Woodstock. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's not legal there yet. <laughs> <laughs> but she's here today, and we're thrilled. Please welcome Lindsay Webster. Yay. Thank you. We're going to play uh, a brand new single of ours called Back to Your Heart, which is a title track from the album that Gary was just holding. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. It's, um, it's an interesting album for me. It's my third album. Um, on my first album, we wrote about half the material. On the second album, we wrote all the material, uh, which, you know, and it's always evolving. So this third album for me is some of my best uh, writing, um, some of our best music writing, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Was always too much 
And you can never hand on a little side You never try to see him from my side No matter how I look, I just don't know how To show you the way back to your heart You gotta give me a sign, someone knows This is Lori Ocean with your KSBR Orange County Entertainment Calendar. Tonight at Thornton Winery at 7 p.m., it's Brian Culbertson and Javier Colon. The L.A. Rams take on the Buffalo Bills at L.A. Coliseum tomorrow at 125. On October 12th, Laguna Beach Live presents Greg Adams and East Bay Soul at Montage Laguna. More information is available at lagunabeachlive.org. Coming up on October 15th, Niels performs at Spagatini in Seal Beach at 8 o'clock. And the Catalina Jazz Fest is coming up October 13th through the 16th. For a list of local venues, check out the Music Venues link on ksbr.org. I'm Lori Ocean for FM 88.5 KSBR. <laughs> She's hot. <laughs> I'm getting the vapors again. <laughs> wow, look at that stuff. Stop <laughs> it. It's Welcome okay. back. Wow, nice. nice. I didn't think about that aspect. Yeah, well, oh, you know, this is the stuff. You? This is what there happens. This is the, you. You pointed it out. It's the same. Yeah. Uh, you got the same uh, dress on. Yes, I do. She did that on purpose. Did you? She wanted to make I'm sure, right? Yeah. This Bud Harner guy thinks everything, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, yes. He thinks it all through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad to meet you. Thanks for, so much for coming on. How was the, how was the flight yesterday? That's always an adventure, huh? It was a breeze. Nice, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, your mic. Okay. Is it on? Okay, let's see. Is your mic? This stuff isn't easy, you know? Check, check. It's on. Hello. It's on. It's on. We getting it? Do a mic check for you. Check Hello. Pretty hard. Hard stuff. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We one. have a dead mic. Yeah. Here we go. I'll tell you what, grab that. Here, let's see. Hmm? We are getting the wireless, wireless? mic. Here we yeah. go. 
Thank you very much. Can you hear me, you hear me, you hear me you, now? Sir? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Nothing to it, you know? Full service here. Try that. Check one, two. There you go. There you go. Oh. There you go. Oh. See? That's all it takes. That's all it takes. So, how was your flight? The flight was <laughs> very <good>. smooth. <laughs> it was very, very, it was it a was breeze. It was still good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the more I fly, the more I get used to it. I used to really get anxiety before I would get on the airplane. Like, the night before, I, I couldn't sleep, you know, thinking oh. of all the what-ifs. And I mean, I know people fly all the time, every single day, <laughs> and so now I'm getting used to it because we've been doing a lot of traveling this year, so. Yeah. You, Lizzie, you said before, I don't know if you were just kidding or not, that you really get nervous before this. I, I mean, really? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. I always get, like, butterflies. It doesn't matter, like, if it's, like, a show like this or, like, a little, even when I was, when, when, when we were just doing, like, restaurant gigs, I would always be, like, but once you start oh singing, though, aren't you a little bit more calmer? I mean, yeah. once you get up there and yeah. start doing that? Yeah, because, I don't know, I guess the things that I'm nervous about are like, oh, what if my voice, like, cracks or what is, you know, Aww. like, things that are silly to even think about. But, yeah. you know, they cross your mind. And, and especially now that we've been doing, like, more, like, bigger performances, it's kind of like, you know, it's a little more nerve-wracking, but I'm getting used to it. You know, the more we, the more we do it. The do you more have any traditional things that you do prior to going um, on stage? Like, you know, I just like to have like a couple a of drinks. Can <laughs> 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 well, there's a lot of people that do Sometimes. things. You know, like rub a monkey's belly or rub <laughs> a monkey's belly. <laughs> or they like, you know, yeah, did you do any that? <laughs> Who does are they, the hell rubs a monkey? Oh, they turn around three times to the left. Yeah, or to let's the go right. back to the monkey's belly <laughs> thing. I don't know who is doing that. You yeah, gotta work some of that into your act. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. Of course, you have to take the monkey on the plane with you. That brings up all kinds <laughs> of other issues. She could have a stuffed monkey. <laughs> yeah, a stuffed a monkey. A, a monkey double. <laughs> I can just a backup, rub. backup a backup monkey. I'll just rub Keith's belly. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's what there I'll do. Go. All right, Keith, we're going to do that yeah, now. We're going to rub your belly. <laughs> um, you, you sing backup with, with Donna Fagan? Um, there was an occasion that I did sing backgrounds with him, yes. How did that come about? Um, well, in our town of Woodstock, there's like famous people. David Bowie uh, lived there. Um, he actually passed away in his home uh, mm -hmm. in the Hudson right. Valley, um, where I'm from, in Woodstock. And um, Donald ha lives there. Uh, oh, is he, he and his wife. Yeah. yeah, he and his wife live there. Um, and his daughter, um, I guess. Daughter, what's it when it's, it's on a stepchild? Yeah, it's, it's his stepdaughter, is Amy Helm, who's Levon oh, right. Helm's daughter. Right. Um, and so they're super close, and she sings with him every now and again. And we were doing a performance at Levon Helm's barn. And, uh, barn? So, yeah, the, the, oh, it's, it's like a, a famous, okay. yeah. it's like a, the, the ramble, the midnight ramble, okay. the barn. Well, I'm visualizing Woodstock and visualizing <laughs> a barn. It's a nice barn. Okay, it's a nice barn. It's like, oh, <laughs> a, it's like a renovated <laughs> barn. Is, is that continuing? <laughs> That, that deal since he passed away? Um, well, like the show that we did was one instance of like ha them having a show. It wasn't, a mi they don't call it the Midnight Ramble. I think it was called Amy's Coming Home or something because yeah. she was out on the road in it. Yeah. Um, but they do, they do shows there. Um, Graham Nash just played there uh, last week. And uh, so yeah, they, they do shows and that was an instance where I got to sing Black Friday and- um, Oh my, how Oh fun. right, because it was on Black Friday. That's ah, what the occasion hello. was, yeah, yeah. And um, so, <laughs> you know, um, and then I, I, I did another song with him too. It was really, I mean, I'm such a huge Steely Dan, Donald Fagan fan that yeah. I, and it's, 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 it's kind of hard. Like at, at first I was, I would really get starstruck when I would see him, I'd be like, it's Donald Fagan. Oh, and, sure. uh, and, and I always wanted to, um, like have like a fez in the, in the car and just walk it in. <laughs> well, put it on and walk in and be like, well, you told me I can't do it without the fez on. <laughs> but I haven't done that yet. But <laughs> now that I know him, he might think it's weird. I don't know. Anyway, that was always like one of my, one of my, yeah, maybe one day. Oh, man. <laughs> so uh, it was an amazing experience. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. The Daryl's house thing too. What a fun, I mean, that's a, a cool club. It yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, and he, it's it's a great venue. Uh, s the sound is amazing. It's yeah. just you know they built it for sounding. You know like yeah. they, they did sound wow. treatments and they really spent a lot of time on that. So, yeah. and they're awesome there. They treat us great. So. T tell tell us. Let's. I want to hear about you know your your parents and growing up and, and I mean you who's, you know this yeah, this gift that you got. 
Like, what know, do you have I mean, on the where, where, did they co- where did they come from? Is it from your mom? Is it from your dad? Is it, do you know? Well, um, my mom was an opera singer. Um, but she also loved to sing. She, her parents wanted her to be an opera singer. She wasn't really an opera singer. She wanted to be like a... She said she always wanted to be a background singer in like rock and roll bands. Well, she course. always like envisioned herself like doing the dances and whatever. <laughs> um, and uh, so my mom was a really um, great singer. Uh, my dad is musical. He picks up a guitar. He can play it. He sits down at the piano. He can play it. Nothing really like professionally, but he's got musicality. And yeah. he also has a voice too. I heard him sing, and I was like, <gasps> and he was like, oh no, no. I was like, oh my Aww. god. And so you know, like they're both they're musical. Um, and I was. So this is going to be a fun ride for them to, to watch. Too, yeah, huh? yeah. My dad is so proud. And th- my mom passed away in 2014. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. We miss her so much. Um, Did she sing while you were in the belly? <laughs> you know, I would imagine because she would sing yeah. all the time. You know, yeah. she would just. I remember. Oh, I feel so bad now. But when I was a little kid, she would sing, and I would be like, "Stop, mom, stop." <laughs> 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 and she told me that, and I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, and That's she, cute. I don't know why, why I did that, but I was just, ah, she had a beautiful kid. voice. Yeah, yeah, I was a kid. Yeah, you know. kid. I mean, what did we do, you know? Yeah, yeah. T- tell, me, tell me about the, the, I'm not familiar with the LaGuardia School. Oh, the high school yeah. in Manhattan, yeah. Um, well, it, it was, it's been around for a long time. Um, and then two schools kind of came together um, and created LaGuardia High School for the Music, Art, and Performing Arts. Um, and I, I moved to the city when I was 16 with my parents, and um, I auditioned on the cello. Um, I wasn't really singing a lot then. I was really, I, I, I played the cello since I was uh, like in third grade. Really? Yeah, and I, I was really taking that quite seriously. I was in like, uh, you know, all county and all state, and wow. did every like extracurricular thing I could do. I never went to like math or any of that kind of class, but I would always <laughs> make it to like my extracurricular <laughs> cello <laughs> playing stuff. And, um, and then I moved uh, from a school district that, that had music, that carried the music program into one that didn't. After I went to LaGuardia, I moved to a place that, um, you know, that wasn't important to them. And so that kind of fell by the wayside and I started singing a lot more. Am I off topic? What did you ask me? <laughs> you're doing fine. You're, no, I asked you about LaGuardia, the school. Oh, okay. No, it's, LaGuardia. you're doing fine. Um, yeah, and it was really cool to go to LaGuardia. I only lived in Manhattan for about a year, um, but it was an experience. Oh, it, it, there's no place like it. I had never. I had visited, uh, I think, once or twice before I moved down there. Oh only that. Man. Yeah, yeah. So it was. And, and you were? Oh, you were high school. Yeah, I was um, 16. Yeah, 16, 17 when I was... When did you discover your voice? Well, um, I grew up in Woodstock, so, um, you know, it's a really artistic community, a really um, artful community, so um, we had, in my elementary school, they really supported music, Uh and and that's when I started playing the cello, and I just always loved to sing. I, I... I don't really know that there was like a point when I was like, oh, I think I'm going to be a singer. I just would always sing along to songs on the mm-hmm. radio or like jingles on the TV and, and um, well, just really enjoyed it. Well, your parents must have been listening. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they um, said, oh my gosh, yeah. the girl can sing. Yeah, <laughs> and, and um, I don't know, I just always love to sing along to my favorite songs and I would sit in my bedroom and just try to hit the notes that Mariah Carey would hit and try to do what Whitney Houston did and you know. I and just you did. Yeah, and I never really had any formal voice lessons so I always joke around that Mariah Carey was my voice teacher. Cause I would always <laughs> just really? try, yeah, because I would always just try to like emulate her and, and wow. Whitney and, and then Christina Aguilera when she came out. I just like the big soaring voices and so. Wow. How fun. And of course, I had my voice in there somewhere, but they, they helped, you know, listening yeah, to all those. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, let's talk about the, the new CD coming up. This is, this is exciting yeah. stuff, huh? Yes, yes. Um, how, how long has this been in progress? Um, well, we started recording in January of this year. So, you know, I'll, it'll be, what month is it? It'll be about 10 months. Yeah. You know? it, took us, it took us like eight months to really uh, finish it all. Because we, you know, you, g- you mix it and you master it. Sure, um, all that So we stuff. finished that uh, in the beginning of September. Where did you do it? In, w- in Rhinebeck, New York. Yeah. Yeah. At a, at a Clubhouse Studios, which is, you know, the Lumineers just did their latest album there. Um, Natalie Merchant. Uh, what's that 
he's really up and coming, Mendez. Sean Mendez just did his oh record yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. And we're good friends with the owner, Paul Antonell, and he's just so great to work with, and he's really flexible with us because crazy artist people, you know. You've put out a couple CDs before this, but, the, yeah. but this is like the, the, the big one, right? I mean, from your perspective? Yeah, I'm like different levels too, yeah. because, um, you know, we had our like breakthrough song, if you will, with Fool Me Once, yeah. and uh, it went to number one on Billboard, and that, you know, was like the beginning for this like shift in my career. Um, and that happened back in February, and our manager, Bud Harner, well, my manager, Bud Harner, um, he has just been like our champion and, and, and spreading the word and, and really helping us to, to get to the next level. And you know, this, this next album, uh, Back to Your Heart, is kind of like the next level for like songwriting for me. Like, uh, for you, Change, uh, there's a couple songs that I'm just like, I don't want to hear that song again. You know, <laughs> and and with this one, there's only one song I feel that way about. But don't worry about that. It's you know, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> no one else will even think that. You know, we're we're our, I'm my own worst critic. But I just love <laughs> all the hard, songs. It? You know, it's 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 yeah, it's hard. Like yeah. there's little things in each song where I'm like, should have done a harmony on that thing. Should have you know, like these stupid little right. things. But really though, this album for me is um, our best work yet. It's it's. I don't know. It's, it just feels like a solid thing. Nice. You know. So we're, we're, we can't wait to hear it. We're, we're uh, in fact, we're going to ask you to do uh, a couple more. Some yeah. more of it off. Yeah. We're going to stick around. We're going to take a break and come back, and Lindsay's going to do her thing again for us. <laughs> and uh, Breakfast with Gary and Kelly. <laughs> awesome. Sorry about the mic thing. God almighty, this day is like this. Sorry, get this that. Day from Let's get hell. you fixed up. Breakfast with Gary and Kelly, everybody. This lovely lady is the great Lindsay Webster, who is here. This, this gentleman, <laughs> by the way, say hello to Keith Slattery. Who is this guy? A, you know, he came also. We'll be chatting with him. They got married in January. Did you know that? Aww. So yeah. Oh yeah. They're on newlyweds. Aww. This truly, this is the worst honeymoon ever, right here. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> we got fritters. <laughs> we have fritters. We, we do have fritters, that's right. The good luck for a wedding is a fritter, a fine, fresh fritter. Say that three times real fast. All right. <laughs> she did it. It is hard. What are we going to hear, my dear? We uh, are going to play another song from the album. Hooray. This one is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, it's called Those Three Words. Aww. Lindsay Webster. <laughs> Take all of me Leave nothing 
just your heart. Mm-hmm. Take some time. You will find everything depends on those three. I see your eyes, they stare into me, and I've never wanted any more, yeah, I take these arms, Don't you be afraid of what we might turn into. There's more at stake than just your heart. Ooh, take some time. You I, uh, I didn't know what you were going to do next, so Kate just whispered it to me. This is, this is going to be a special thing. Ooh. This is a special thing. Come. Yeah, this song is not from the album, but it's a song that I'm sure you all know. Uh, it's one of my very favorite songs to sing. It's called Somewhere Over the Rainbow. is a hopeless jumble and the raindrops tumble all around heaven opens up that day when all the clouds darken up the sky 
There's a rainbow highway to be found Just a step beyond the rain Somewhere over the rainbow Way up high There's a that I've heard of once, oh, once in a lullaby. Somewhere the rainbow, skies they are blue. In the dream. That you dare to dream, that you really do come true. One day I wish upon a star, and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops. Up the chimney tops. That's where you find me. Somewhere over the rainbow, oh, bluebirds fly. Birds fly over the rainbow. And wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops. Away above the chimney tops. That's where.
Lisa Ward, oh. and breakfast again, Kelly. <laughs> Spectacular, my dear. for those seats, I'll tell you right here. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Breakfast with Gary and Kelly, everybody. Lindsay Webster now joined by her husband. I still new husband. It's less than a year, right? Keith Slattery, everybody. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Wow. That, that was just spectacular. And, you know, I've, there's a, some versions. I'm sure you've heard the, the Eva Cassidy one. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, t that's yeah. been kind of the benchmark ever since I, I first heard that. But, yeah. but, man, that's right there. That's yeah. right there. Unbelievable. That last note. How long is that last note? Is that like 30 seconds or something? Depends on my mood. Wow. <laughs> I'm telling you, I told you, it just came, it just like the whole, everything on my, my whole body just like rose up Aww. through my head. Thank and I could you. feel it and I was like, Ugh. That's the fritter talking. No. <laughs> How did you guys meet? Well, uh, I just discovered Lindsay. Does this thing work? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. There well, it is. this guy over here told me not to cover my mouth. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at karaoke in Woodstock. Karaoke. Yep. Karaoke. Really? And in fact, we have a friend who's in the audience here that used to go to karaoke in Woodstock, which was, if you've been to Woodstock, is quite a cast of characters. Oh, wow. How long yeah. ago was that? How long ago? Uh, 2000. 2009. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. So were you both there to sing, or were you? No, I was just drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and you went there to sing. I was. I would go every Thursday. Because, and what would you sing? Oh, I used to sing like the Whitney songs and um, Bonnie Raitt songs. Okay. And yeah, I would sing everything. And you were at the bar going, "Hey, she's yeah, looking pretty good." Yeah, and actually, I, I was like, "Wow, she's really good." And I, uh, I was on my way to the bathroom, and she just happened to be on her way to the bathroom at the same time. And I said, "Oh, wow, you're an amazing singer, and you should do this professionally." And that was it. We uh, actually didn't reconnect for, I don't know, for a couple, couple months. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, we ran into each other again, and he was like, oh, you're that singer. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, that singer. Yeah. yeah, well, maybe he didn't. He probably didn't say that. It was my interpretation, <laughs> which I found out that my interpretation of what Keith says is very different than what his interpretation of what he says. <laughs> well, I mean, you know. Well, 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 <laughs> welcome to marriage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so um, we were chatting it up. And uh, he was like, I think I can get you some gigs doing just like jazz standards um, at a country club. And that's where we started off. we started all. writing. We started writing. We started writing, writing, but it was like after, it was after yeah. we did but some gigs together. when did the together. love come? Well, contrary to what most people think, <laughs> I didn't enough. pursue her. It was ah. the other way around. Really? Well, yes. I mean, it was like a mutual. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, it's true. Keith was very professional. Um, 
and then well, there's no fun in that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, we you would know, like we would talk about our own individual. Yeah, because I was in a relationship problems, at yeah. the time, a uh, really bad one. If you're listening. <laughs> um, oh <boy. laughs> Damn you! Wherever you are. I, I've always dreamed about doing that on TV to like an ex-boyfriend. Like if I ever made it, I would dream about that. Like anyway, sorry, baby, sorry. <laughs> Um, this is not like CB radio, you know. <laughs> we are on TV and we are live streaming around the world. I know, right. I know. Yeah, right. So just start listing them off here. Well, you know. <laughs> um, and you know, Keith would be like, "Well, I'm gonna go and take the dogs on a walk with this girl," and and I was like, I kind of realized that I was, you know, like falling in love with Keith um, when he told me that, and I got like a jealous feeling. I was like, "Why do I feel this way?" And then uh, a couple days later, I was like, I have to tell you something. Aww. Yeah. And so what did you say? I was shocked. He, he said, really? <laughs> <laughs> Just like um, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we went off and did a gig. You know, that the next yeah. day, I guess. We, yeah, this, we could did a TV, this, this could be a TV <laughs> movie. This is a family show. OK. <laughs> this could be a TV movie. That's right. Did a gig. Oh, yeah. Now I get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know that's musician. That's talk, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> wow. No, no, I get, I'm gig free. Uh. <laughs> oh. Keith, okay. you yeah. are musically like all over the map. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's really interesting. Kanye West, a bunch of stuff with Kanye West. Kanye and then, West. And then the great, yeah. <laughs> the great Polka King. I know. Jimmy Careful. Sir? <laughs> Jimmy Stewart. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So yeah, I was uh, I at some point I was doing production. I was producing, and and I was like, you know, I'm always paying these recording engineers, and so I'm going to learn how to do that. And I went and I learned, and I became a freelance engineer. And uh, you know, I was working at a studio in New York City, a very famous studio called Quad Studios, uh, and I did a lot of different types of music, but a lot of hip hop. Yeah. And uh, whenever Kanye would come to town, he would request me. And so I worked with him a lot, and I played on his first uh, record. I did a lot of engineering on his first solo record. Um, at the same time, uh, I was touring with a polka band <laughs> playing. Polka? You said polka? polka. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, you know. Yep. Right. <laughs> you, were, you, were, you were just doing that for the groupies, right? Well, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so during the week, I'd be working with, you know, these hardcore gangster rappers. And on the weekend, I'd be traveling around the country with the uh, oh polka band. God. And so in 2004, uh... Now, did you ever get them mixed up? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Two totally different tempos. Do you wear Lederhosen? No, it wasn't that kind of polka band. It was like... Oh, the oh, it was like... <laughs> <laughs> I always called them the metallic, Metallica of polka bands, because it was like a 12-piece band, and, okay. you know... Uh, there was a lot of drinking. Okay. And well, you know, these you like metalachi. I mean, you heard of them, right? Yeah. They do metal yep. music and mariachi. So hey, you never know. Yeah. So in 2004, Kanye won a Grammy for uh, best hip hop record. Uh, so, uh, or maybe they call it best rap record. And uh, I got a Grammy for that, <gasps> playing on and recording. Wow. And Jimmy Stir won best polka record. So in no one year, way. I got a Grammy for best. <laughs> Rap and best polka. Dude, <laughs> dude, that has got to be the only one ever. Right. right. Ever. Has to be. Right. Wow. And, uh, That's like DiMaggio's 56 Game Indie Street. That is a record that will never be broken. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty funny. It's like the whitest music and <laughs> the blackest music. That's right. Whiter than white. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. But my heart is in what we do. Yeah. yeah. I would, at this point, I would certainly hope so. Yes. <laughs> Talk about writing together. What, I mean, was that just magic when you guys first started? I mean, yeah, it really was. Yeah, uh, um, we I, didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I always consider Keith like my musical soulmate um, because I, well, I, I, play, I played the cello for many, many years, um, but I never really learned like guitar or piano or like a writing instrument. So, um, but I would always have melodies in my head, and I just never really knew how to put, you know, the chord structure behind it or write the music to it. Um, and uh, then, you know, Keith 
gave me some some tracks and he was like, oh, check these out. And I was like, oh, these are beautiful. These are, and I wrote song, like our first album, uh, the first song that we wrote together um, was called Don't Go. Um, and then uh, the next song we wrote together was um, In the Moment. And uh, it just really was clear that uh, we had a, a thing going. And um, in the second album, it was a lot more apparent. And But now this third album, Back to Your Heart, like I was saying before, it's, um, it's really um, obvious how well Keith and I work together um, professionally and musically and you know. romantically now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you write songs about your life? I mean, because usually most musicians. Well, this do. one track. Why didn't you take out the garbage? See, that's a <laughs> that's a hit right there. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, sometimes you know, you you write about real life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, it's I'm trying to think about you know sometimes what happens with songs is that it's inspired by something and then like I take it somewhere else. Um, like uh, "Don't Go" was written like I wrote that about Keith. Like that was before we were together when I started the song, but then we were together when I finished the song. Um, and you didn't really so care. I had to figure out where to go with that. One. <laughs> 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 and then it's like, stay. Yeah. The yeah. first version was 47 minutes long. It was like. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it's oh. like that song. Like when I met Keith, I was like, he's just so like the reason why I fell in love with Keith is because he's just like the most thoughtful and selfless individual. Really, truly. I'll take it. And, nice. and you know, like the song says, everything you show me so far is everything I need. And if I get emotional, what are the words? Just <laughs> know it's because I'm overwhelmed with your love. And, um. Um, and it was like the love that he displays for, it wasn't me at that point yet, but. <laughs> it was well, some other it. girl. Like, who is it? Like the way he would talk about your sister and your mother and, you know. Okay. It's like that. So yeah, some cool. songs are personal. Yeah. Um, and um, some songs are inspired by other people. Um, some songs like on this album are inspired by past relationships of mine. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, I wouldn't say that like, any of the songs on the album are like about an ex-boyfriend, just inspired by the fact that that happened in my life. Because mm. they don't deserve songs. <laughs> Good. Glad we're not doing a Taylor Swift. <laughs> well, enjoy it, Keith, while you still I'm deserve a song. No problem. Exactly. Exactly. We're, um, I, I know you've got a tour coming up still. You've, you've kind of just now, the front side of this little West Coast swing, you're going to be doing some stuff to to kind of help kick this this new release off, and you're you're off to uh, San Francisco, is that right? After this, or some, something yeah. like that? Yeah. Well, we're actually headed up to Portland, Portland, Oregon. We're gonna do a show up there, just a one-off, and then we're actually flying out this Where? afternoon. Where? Uh, the Lake Theater in Lake Oswego, I think. Lake Theater and Cafe in Lake Os Oswego. Outside nice. Portland. Nice. Outside yeah. Portland. Okay. You got a Catalina coming up too. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Yoshi's in Oakland, California, yeah. this Thursday, awesome. uh, October thirty. Oh, awesome. nice. Awesome. Yeah. Good. So we're we're gonna go. Ching, 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 right. ching, well, they're 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 gonna ching, kill ching. me here. We're gonna we're gonna take a break and come back and get some more music out of you, if you don't mind, everybody, huh? Thank Lindsay you. Webster, stick around. Come back with us on Breakfast with Gary and Kelly. Nice. What's going to happen is you're going to do the song, they're going to sign off. seconds, Nora.
back, everybody. Hours, yeah. Really has gone fast. This is, this has been a this is so fun. I'm, I'm so glad that we got to meet. This is yeah, just the too. music has been spectacular. Mm -hmm. uh, it really has fun stuff. This is, the, you know, are get you going to get CD. this thing <laughs> really back to your heart? When, when does this come out again? What's the street date? Uh, it's November 4th. Okay. Um, we do have a pre-order going on right now, and uh, after the show, I'm going to be signing CDs. If any of you would like to take a signed CD home with you, I would love to send you home with one. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have a little pre-order form, and uh, we'll send them right to your house, signed if you like. So. <gasps> but November man. 4th is the official date. Wow, how fun. How exciting. Yeah. Nice. All right, what are we going to hear? Uh, we're going to play a song called Fool Me Once, which uh, made it all the way up to... <laughs> thank you. Uh, all the way up to number one on the Smooth Jazz uh, Billboard chart. And, yeah. um, you know, this was uh, kind of our breakthrough song. There you so go. We're Lindsay gonna play Webster. it for you now. There you go, Lindsay Webster. And I'll try to see the light I've already heard It's a lesson for me to try to learn well, They say for me Convince me that I don't know better And maybe I should try to stop oh, Explain to me I will listen Guess you look at it like an omission oh, And that may work for you And you might fool me once, fool me twice But there won't be a third time for you to try to break my heart Or convince me that I don't know better Maybe I should try to stop, yeah So long you convince me that we shouldn't be apart, be apart Oh no, first time, shame on you two times Shame on me Shouldn't be apart 
Well, you know I'm better off without you in the world And there won't be a third time for you to try to break my And the, and the new CD, yeah. it's going to be Thank spectacular. We'll we know see you we'll on your tour. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see you, we'll see you later. Yeah, right. we'll probably be over there. All right, mm -hmm. we're going to do another one, play us out of here. Yes. Woo! Terrific. Yeah, I was just going to say thanks to, to the great people at the Coach House. And all of you for coming today. We really yes. appreciate it. And thank you to AlertTheGlobe.com yep, yep. for producing the show and live yes, streaming it around the world. Exactly. Exactly. Talk to us. So. What are we gonna hear? All right. Uh, we're going to end with uh, our song, Open Up, that was also up on the Billboard chart. It made it up to number three. Um, and But this is a very uh, near and dear song to me because it's about um, realizing that we have everything that we need right inside of ourselves to kind of make our dreams come true. Aww. And it might be hard along the way, but as long as you can remember that, you know, you're self-sufficient, you've got this. Keep going. There you go. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. So slowly With hope that one day I Will get off this ground again But I know I'm gonna fly You are light You are joy Sharing peace all around you
Yeah, yeah. Lindsay Webster, everybody. Thank you.